we exist only to glorify God. And so we praise him in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. May our Lord be with you. Because we wish to glorify God even more deeply, we call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you came to gather all the nations into the peace of your Father's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. You come now in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. You'll come again in glory with salvation for your people at the end of time. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sin and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest and on earth. Peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And we pray. O God, who through the grace of adoption chose us to be children of light, grant we pray that we may not be wrapped up in the darkness of error, but always be seen to stand in the bright light of truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Kings. The Lord said to Elijah, You shall anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat of Abel-Maholah, as prophet to succeed you. Elijah set out and came upon Elisha, son of Shaphat. As he was plowing with twelve yoke of oxen, he was following the twelfth. Elijah went over to him and threw his cloak over him. Elisha left the oxen, ran after Elijah, and said, Please let me kiss my father and mother goodbye, and I will follow you. Elijah answered, Go back. Have I done anything to you? Elisha left him, and taking the yoke of oxen, slaughtered them. He used the plowing equipment for fuel to boil their flesh, and gave it to his people to eat. Then Elisha left, and followed Elijah as his attendant. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You are my inheritance, O Lord. You are my inheritance, O Lord. Keep me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, my Lord are you. O Lord, my allotted portion and my cup, you it is who hold fast my lot. You, you are, are my inheritance, inheritance, O Lord. I bless the Lord who counsels me. Even in the night, my heart exhorts me. I set the Lord ever before me. With him at my right hand, I shall not be disturbed. You are my, my inheritance, O Lord. Therefore, my heart is glad and my soul rejoices. My body, too, abides in confidence, because you will not abandon my soul to the netherworld, nor will you suffer your faithful one to undergo corruption. You are my inheritance, O Lord. You will show me the path to life, fullness of joys in your presence, the delights at your right hand forever. You are my inheritance, O Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Brothers and sisters, for freedom Christ set us free. So to stand firm and do not submit again to the yoke of slavery. For you were called for freedom, brothers and sisters. 
but do not use this freedom as an opportunity for the flesh. Rather, serve one another through love. For the whole law is fulfilled in one statement, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you go on biting and devouring one another, beware that you are not consumed by one another. I say then, live by the Spirit, and you will certainly not gratify the desire of the flesh. For the flesh has desires against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. These are opposed to each other, so that you may not do what you want. But if you are guided by the Spirit, you are not under the law. The word of the Lord. May the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. When the days for Jesus being taken up were fulfilled, he resolutely determined to journey to Jerusalem. And he sent messengers ahead of him. On the way, they entered a Samaritan village to prepare for his reception there, but they would not welcome him because the destination of his journey was Jerusalem. When the disciples, James and John, saw this, they asked, Lord, do you want us to call down fire from heaven to consume them? Jesus turned, rebuked them, and they journeyed to yet another village. As they were proceeding on their journey, someone said to them, I'll follow you wherever you go. Jesus answered, foxes have dens, birds of the sky have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Another said, follow me. But he replied, Lord, let me go first and bury my father. Jesus answered him, let the dead bury their dead. But you go, proclaim the kingdom of God. Another said, I'll follow you, Lord. But first, let me say farewell to my family at home. To him, Jesus said, no one who sets a hand to the plow, but looks to what was left behind, is fit for the kingdom of God. The gospel of the Lord. Every scripture scholar in the world comments that Jesus seems to have a very nasty attitude. You let the dead bury their dead. You know, don't worry about your father. Like, wow, that's a difficult, interesting gospel. So we have a little golf ball here, which can help me out a little bit. That was the gospel many years ago. I was a kid serving mass over at Nativity. And the priest, who was a friend of mine, threw me, it was about the size of a golf ball, you know, before mass. I was friends of his, still am. And uh, on the, this says Pinnacle. That's a common name in golf. Titleist is probably the best known name. But he said, um, uh, he, he said, look at the ball. And it had on it T O I T. T O I T. Not T O O I T. T O I T. I'm like, well, Father, what, what's, what's on your mind? T O I T. He said, what shape is the ball? A little bigger than this. I said, well, it's round. And he said, put, put those words together. I said, round to it, round to it. And I said, oh, I get it, round to it. Get around to it. And he said, listen to today's gospel, Edwards. And I was probably 16, 17 at the time, so I got it. That's how a lot of us view religion. I'll get around to it. I'll get around to it. That's what those guys are saying in the gospel. Jesus says, come and follow me. Well, I got to go, you know, my father's getting old. Give me, give me five, ten years, dad will die, and then I'll, be, I'll get around to it. Jesus says, no, right now. Right now. Well, let me go say goodbye. No, right now. 
Jesus didn't have a lot of time for the I'll get around to it. Right now. No around to it's for Jesus. Right now. You saw this Saturday night at the black party. Right at that corner. Wayne and William, a lady fell. And man, she planted her face right in the concrete. I don't mean to laugh. It wasn't funny. I ain't, and I'm no doctor or nurse. And the blood was coming out pretty good. You know, I'm sure she was as embarrassed as she was hurt. Everybody was running to stop the bleeding and stuff, you know. Get on the phone immediately and get the ambulance. And the problem is, that street is closed. So the ambulance has to come a different way. My greatest nightmare, you know. But get the ambulance here immediately. Not, well, we'll get around to it. There's an urgency to following Jesus. Not, well, I'll get it, you know, down, down the road. I'll get around to it. Not in Jesus' book. Uh-uh. It's now. Right now, get the ambulance, get behind me, get on the bandwagon. And a lot of us are, this helps us understand something. And some of you have to deal with this. I don't too much. You know, I don't see anybody in the building under the age of 40. I'm not sure how many I see under the age of 50. Who's here? Bald heads and gray hair. And the young people, who are good people. I love young people. For a lot of them, religion is something that they'll get around to it. Not that they don't believe in God, but it's something that they'll get around to being a faithful father. I'll give you an example. It's this time of year. Every high school senior wants to go on senior week. Now, that wasn't a big thing back when I graduated high school. Now every kid wants to go to senior week. What are they going to do on senior week? I don't think they're going to mass. <laughs> You're supposed to laugh. That was your big joke for the morning. And, and uh, you know, I think most kids make good decisions, but a lot of kids will do things that the law or religion, whatever their religion is, would say that's probably not a good idea to do those things. And some get in serious trouble. You know, they leave their religion home. Because when I'm young, that's the time to have fun. Religion and all that stuff, family values, I'll get around to that. We'll get around to that. But when you're young, let's go have fun. Spring break is the same in college. I'm not sure what ever happens on spring break that's positive. I don't think too much. But religion will get around to it when they're our age as if they could be guaranteed that they'll live to be as old as we are. But they'll get around to it. And you're frustrated when your kids don't endorse your values. But they'll get around to it. But not today. There's no urgency. And that's got to be frustrating if you're a parent or a grandparent or a godparent. And the kids, religion is something they'll get around to it. Maybe next year. And you pull your hair out. They'll get around to it. While it is true that the Roe versus Wade issue got ink that you can't believe, I am deeply concerned with the fact that the day before, right here in our own little turf, we had three incidents of young people, two of which involved fatalities. Kids who won't grow up to live as they're dead. Right here in our own area. You know, kids do things, you know, if they had re strong religious values that they practice and strong family values, those kids would still be alive. You know, and they're not bad kids, but they're just getting around to better decisions, especially with religion and family. You know, and I could that I'm not talking about the fact that those things happen here in northeastern Pennsylvania. They happen all over North America. Kids are getting around to making better decisions. And for those two kids, it's too late. They're dead. You know, in the movie Toy Story 3, the kid's going off to college, and he takes the toys, Buzz Lightyear, etc., and he puts them up in the attic. Puts them up in the attic. Something he did when he was a kid, play with the toys. But now he's an adult. Religious values, faith, church, mass, sacraments, 
What's up in the attic? You know, the kids are the ones who are bleeding. Not that lady at the corner. We stopped her bleeding. But the kids are bleeding. They're, they're bleeding for better decisions. They're, they're bleeding for life and hope and a meaningful life. And a lot of kids, I, those two kids are dead. That should have us deeply concerned. Deeply concerned. Our young people will get around to it. They may not live that long. That's a challenge for every family in this building, every family in this world. Let us stand, my friends, and we'll profess our faith in Almighty God. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He'll come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead life of the world to come. Amen. We put our prayers before Almighty God. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer, that all people find in the church the truth that sets them free. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the entire world come to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to violence and war, especially in Ukraine, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our military, police, firefighters, first responders, healthcare workers, and all those serving in dangerous professions, that the Holy Spirit will guide, direct, and protect them at all times, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the containment and eradication of the COVID-19 virus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the living and deceased members of our parish for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us end the petitions by praying the vision prayer. Jesus, we, we are your people. people. We, we praise, praise you as Savior, Savior and Lord. Lord. Deepen, Deepen our, our commitment to you, to you, your church, and, and each, each other. other. Let us all so share more actively, actively, actively in spreading, spreading the, the good, good news of God, God present, present among, among us. us. Help us reach, reach out to those who have not yet experienced the joy, the joy of, of participating in parish life. Inspire us to seek justice and peace for all members of our parish family and beyond. Assist us in living your gospel of compassion and love in service to those in need. Mindful of our many blessings, we are especially grateful for your gift of our parish family. Family dedicated to Mary, Mother of God, spouse Joseph, and our beloved saints, Anthony, Vincent, Stanislaus, and Stephen. Lord, send us your spirit. Make us alive as we have never been. Let us celebrate together and place our hope in you. Amen. Amen.
Pray, friends, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. God, who graciously accomplished the effects of your mysteries, grant we pray the deeds by which we serve you may be worthy of these sacred gifts. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty, our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. You so love the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer, to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son. By his obedience, we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning, we lost to disobedience. So Lord, with the angels and saints, we too give you thanks in an exalting hymn of praise as we say, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper ended, he took a chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, blood of a new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity with Francis, our Pope Joseph, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters fallen asleep in the hope of resurrection, all who died in your mercy. Welcome them to the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise you and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Together we pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of the church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen.
peace of the Lord be with you always. We share a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. So we have an interesting announcement, and we're doing something different, and it's kind of clever, and best, 
it's free. On Sunday the 10th, coming up, a couple weeks, right after the 11 o'clock Mass, right here on the rectory grounds, we're going to have kind of a special event called Proud to Be MMOG. And there'll be tables set up with information on, well, how do I get to be on a committee? How do I get to be a lector? How do I get to be a Eucharistic minister? What does it mean to be on the parish council or the finance council? Kind of information kind of day, but hopefully with good weather. Fingers crossed, just a time to gather. Hamburgs, hot dogs on the grill, soda, entertainment, music, etc. And it's just an opportunity to learn about all the different ministries and activities and what gifts and talents do you have that you can put at the service of God's people. For example, the, the swimsuit collection back there. You might have to, you know, buy a towel for a kid down at Weston Field, whatever, and they get, we get attacked when we bring those swimsuits in because a kid, you see kids swimming with shorts on. You're supposed to have a bathing suit, not shorts. You know, that's all the kid has. And he doesn't have a towel. And they attack us like you're running for your life because you have something that they need. So that's a committee that does that, the service and community teams. There'll be games and prizes for the kids, four tickets to a rail riders game. I'm not sure how they can win that. but So that's on the 10th, right after 11. Now you people are probably early birds, but come back after the 11 on the t July 10th. And it's a fun day to give us some information and opportunities to serve. How can I serve this church better? What can I do? What gifts do I have? Also the uh, air conditioning collection. Boy, imagine what the 11 o'clock mass is going to be like today. That's going to be a hot mass. Well, we have about $32,000. We're hoping for one fifty dollars or thereabouts. The air conditioning should be in by the end of summer with luck. Supply chain has hurt, but they, nothing gets done quickly today. Nothing got done quickly at the block party. Things take time today. It takes time to get stuff. It was $5 for a hamburger. Think about that. $5 for a hamburger. That's the way things are today. Everything is harder. So please donate, you know, as best you can. If you want air conditioning, we have to pay for it. So, and we do need it. We don't have it. We have to have it. So please donate, and we'll get the air conditioning in as soon as possible. And don't forget the 10th, right after 11 o'clock Mass, a little, a little parish gathering right out on the lawn. Let us all stand to pray. May this divine sacrifice that we have offered and received, Lord, Fill us with your life, we pray, so that bound to you in lasting charity, we may bear fruit that lasts forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Lord be with you. Mighty God bless us, our families, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Our literary jams, we go in peace, glorify God with our lives. Thanks be to God. We'll do